Hello and welcome back to the Villa Villa podcast. I'm here as always with my good friend Dan Wiseman. Dan, Robin Olsen has joined Aston Villa on loan from AS Roma. Before we get into that, mate, how are you doing? I'm good, mate. I'm good. This feels a bit more like uh, the transfers that we've been discussing for a longer time. It's been quite exciting this month, hasn't it, mate? But yeah, this is a um, this is a bit more run of the mill, but one that we've we thought should give it its due diligence because um, it is one that I think he's a high profile enough Simon. It's from a big club like Roma, so it'd be interesting to get into it, mate. Yeah, for sure. But before we do get into that, first of all, we've got a word from today's video sponsors. Dan, have you ever wanted an app? that collates all the scores and news from your favourite teams in the whole of Europe, Dan. Have you ever wanted that? It's, it's a constant need of mine, mate, because there's always news. That's the thing, is that we're, we, we love this game. We love the industry of football because it's ever-changing, mate, and you need a place to keep up with it all. And we have that place exactly for we you sure guys. Do, it's one football. Guys, this app is genuinely, it's life-changing. It's great because I actually already I, I use it. Um, so it's like it's great because it's where I pull the stats from for the podcast. So it's like there's also there's all that new stuff as well. But you you can track all of the players' stats from like across Europe for all the different leagues for continental football as well. Uh, it's 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 a dream. It's a dream. And the best part, mate, is it's free. It's free, and guys, it would help support the channel massively if you check that one football using the link in the description down below. We promise you guys won't be disappointed. So, guys, if you haven't checked out One Football, make sure you do with the top link in the description. You won't be let down. You'll never miss a beat when it comes to transfers, updates, scores, facts, stats. Everything you need to know is all there at One Football. So, yeah. But, Dan, I mean, Robin Olsen, of course, as we alluded to, mate, it's hardly going to be the most exciting transfer that gets done this season. And that's kind of why we included it in the last transfer update. It, I mean, we can't do a full a full rumour mill on this guy. Uh, you know, Sheffield United's on loan number one. But he's a Villa player now, so of course he has our unequivocal support and will do until he leaves uh, and, and returns back to Roma. It's a deal, Dan, that, you know, it, it seems to have kind of come out of nowhere. And We were only talking yesterday, Dan, about doing a Sergio Rico uh, transfer mm-hmm. rumour mill, as, as, as that's a bit a, much more of a sexier name for a transfer rumour mill, for sure, playing for Paris Saint-Germain. And here we are. Robin Olsen has been done. It seems like the talks uh, went on with his with with, with with his side, his agents first, um, and then they've kind of consulted uh, Roma and Sheffield United, got that loan cancelled. It's a bit of a strange one, really, mate, because, you know, looking at Robin Olsen's career, it's, it's a name that's, he, you know, he's certainly been about for a while and has has played for, you know, some respectively big clubs, um, you know, you're, you're looking at Malmo, you're looking at Copenhagen, Roma. Um, he's had loan spells at Cagliari, at, at Everton, and of course, Sheffield United, which has just been put short. Um, he, he hasn't actually made that many appearances, Dan, which is something that I found quite surprising given his age. You know, he's 32 years old. And again, he, he's a name that I've at least been aware of for, for quite a while, mate. Yeah, so he, he's he's a really curious case, and he, he's actually a goalkeeper that I don't want to say that I've been following for a little while, but he um, he was obviously at, at, so you have to his story goes way back to um, a, a guy called Munchie. Some people will know he's he's one of the most more famous sporting directors in the world. Had um, had spent a long time of his career at Sevilla, where he just like established a real ability to make profit on players, basically discover players using you, you ever seen the film Moneyball mate you ever you ever seen that Great film? film it's exactly that premise so Munchie would come in he spent ages at Sevilla and he helped pick up the names like um Jesus Navas, Sergio Ramos, Adriano, Dani Alves, Julio Baptista, Saidu Keita, Ivan Rakitic, Jose Antonio Reyes the lift went on and on he had this huge network of over 700 scouts around the world and he used this like Moneyball system to pick out these players really low fee, look at their stats and say, okay, this guy's going to come in and help fill the spot of this guy. And he made around £200 million profit in the transfer market to Sevilla and helped establish Sevilla as the club that, you know, their fans know and love today has won multiple Europa Leagues. Huge side. He left for Roma in about 2018 and bought 2017. A year later, they sold Alison Becker 
to Liverpool. So Munchie at Roma does his thing. He goes out, looks at all the goalkeepers in Europe, looks at their stats and think, right, OK, I've looked at all the numbers. And I think this guy, Robin Olsen at Copenhagen, is the guy that we need to fill the shoes of Alison Becker. Um, and basically just got it completely wrong. <laughs> he was, he was, he was not, a, and there's no slight on Robin Olsen, but obviously we know the goalkeeper that Alison Beck has gone on to be at Liverpool. Robin Olsen uh, spent a good time, a uh, good, good bit of time at Roma, um, just couldn't fill those boots, basically. Made about 35 appearances um, in one season, but never really enamoured the, the, the Roman faithful. Um, and so a series of loans have proceeded. He went out on, uh, to loan to Everton, which I think, you know, when he came into the eyes of most English fans, when they were having real problems with Jordan Pickford that season, and they needed a goalkeeper that was going to come in and be a number two, but would also provide significant challenge to that number one spot. Uh, he made, num again, a number of appearances as well for Everton that season, seven in the Premier League, 11 in total. Um, and then this season, uh, he's gone on loan to Sheffield United, who have obviously had quite a few loans for, um, fill their goalkeeper um, spot in, in recent years. Um, and so it's one of those where he feels like, he, you know, he's well suited to the English game, has played for a lot of high profile clubs. And I think, you know, it won't be a situation, situation like Everton's where he's expected to provide competition. He will be very much a number two that will come in and, and, and play when needed. Um, he won't get too great an opportunity to play considering, you know, we're at the FA Cup and stuff like that. And Emmy isn't going to budge in any of those Premier League games. But he provides significant cover. He's, he's a well-established name. And it looks like we've, we've tried for a few different names. Sergio Rico, Darren Randolph looked pretty nailed on at one point, but that fell apart, it seems. So it seems like he was perhaps not our first choice, but he, he's one that should be able to do the job quite comfortably. Sure. And, and, and you know, Olsen is actually... You know, there, there are some some sort of tentative links between Olsen and our, our Johan Langer, Dan, because obviously Langer has, has spent some time at, at Copenhagen. Yeah. Um, as an assistant, he was there for about, he was there, there for about four years, um, sort of around, around the time he, he, you know, I think, I think actually he, he, he'd spent some time um, from, I think on loan in 2016, it looks like, um, but of course, you know, utilising that contact book exactly as Johan Langer does. And, you know, we'd seen that recently with, with uh, Luca Dean, his age and his, his name's um, slipped my mind for now. But he's a, he's a, he's a former uh, Middlesbrough player uh, who, who Langer knows quite well, uh, Scandinavian bloke. Uh, I'm sure you guys can correct me in the comments or Dan, if you can uh, remember his name off the top of your head. Ahead of, probably a, a bit ahead of our time, Dan, but... You know, it's good to see that we can we can get these kind of deals in, and you know, we're spending twenty five million pounds on Dean Coutinho's obviously come in on a loan. We're only paying one hundred and fifty grand a week. Uh, you know, that comes that comes to about five mil at the end of the season, Dan, which is crazy to think he costs less than Ross Barkley. Um, so you know, another loan, it's low risk. Olsen, you know, I think we we kind of had this debate on the last podcast, Dan. Is he necessarily better than? Steer or Sonalso or any of the other young keepers who we've got. Uh, probably it's not the most exciting signing, but again, it, it, it's important that we let Stevie really, you know, put his, you know, make his impression on the team. Signings are, of course, always going to be an important thing. And, you know, it, it's going to see, it, it almost, it's, it's writings on the wall, really, for Jed Steer, which is, is kind of unfortunate given what he's contributed to the club. But, you know, it, that, that's a debate that we had in, in, in the last podcast, Dan. Um, it, it, it's, it's something that I think makes sense if he doesn't deem Steer to be good enough or, or Sinalso, which, of course, given Sinalso's age, you wouldn't necessarily expect him to be the number two goalkeeper. Um, but no, I, it, it makes sense. It's not the most exciting of moves, Dan. Um, and hopefully, you know, that sort of money ball approach you were talking about, mate, uh, Johan Langer can can find another few players in, in that style for us, mate. Yeah, hundred percent. And, and you know, look, I, I think you need, we need, you know this is a guy that he's played in multiple leagues across Europe. He's made fifty two appearances for for Sweden. Um, you know, he, he's someone that you know. Obviously, he joined the the Sheffield. He joined Sheffield United back in August. That was when that loan came about. Um, but he hasn't actually featured for Sheffield United in any competition 
since November. Uh, Wes Fotheringham has actually, you know, st- come back in and, uh, you know, he's become the number one in, in that period. Um, so it looks like, you know, this comes at a good time for him as well. He's someone that, you know, he will be quite eager to, to sort this move and, and, and get this done and, and find himself at a club where um, his role is more clear. You, you know, it's, it seems like, you know, he would have gone to Sheffield United expecting to play number one for, and in the championship, that's possible. I think he'll come to Villa knowing that he will be the number two, but at least it's to be, you know, it's, it's what he expects. He knows what will become the norm. I imagine he feels slightly aggrieved by what happened at Sheffield United. He'll provide a, a, some decent competition to Emmy, someone with a lot of experience of playing around Europe. Um, you know, he's 32 years old, six foot five. So he's got a good profile, still in a very, still a very good age for a goalkeeper. Um, it'd be interesting to see what happens, you know, once the loan is, is, is through, because as you said, we, we've got goalkeepers coming through that I think are very much capable of filling that number two spot. And I, th- I would like them to as well. Um, so, yeah, I, th- I think it's one that, as I said, he'll be glad of as well, mate. Yeah, and, and that confusion, you know, it comes about, I mean, Sheffield United appointed Slavislav Jukanovic, got rid of him then around that sort of November, December time, mate. They brought in Paul Heckenbottom. He hasn't fancied him for whatever reason. Again, you know, as, as, as the point I kind of made earlier, managers, they, they like to come in and leave their impression on the team, pick the players who they prefer. It's just one of them ones, really. And I guess, you know, the, there's sort of no hard feelings considering he isn't, a Sheffield United player, but you know, as, as you say, mate, if he comes in and and understands, you know, the role that he's going to be fulfilling, um, I guess it's it's a win win for everyone. Um, you know, interestingly, I thought, you know what, we'll compare the stats between Robin and Emmy. Um, and I mean, Emmy Martinez, of course, do do not get this. With, Emmy Martinez is fantastic, genuinely top five goalkeeper in the world. You look at you look at his FB ref profile, mate, and it's it doesn't actually look that great. Um, which, you know, again, is something that we've, it's kind of been a bit of a theme really on the podcast. We like to give you the stats, but also you can't just, you can't just judge it on that. You have to judge it on the eye test. Um, and, and that's something I feel like we really need to caveat because recently there's been, I mean, FB ref now, Dan, I, I'm not saying that we're responsible for Villa fans using FB ref, but it's everywhere at the moment. Um, and, I've noticed it's a bit of a trend. People are like screenshotting the percentiles without a name, they're posting it, and they're being like, X player, it, you know, obviously they're not saying who it is. This is this player the perfect fullback for Steven Gerrard? And they're trying to catch people out because they're doing it with like Matt Target. They'll be like, isn't this guy brilliant? And people obviously think it's Luca Dean. They go, yeah, it's fantastic. They just want to come in and go, it's actually Matt Target. Um, so, you know, you can't, you might, my point being, you can't always look at the stats. Um, no, absolutely. But, you not. know, to, to look at to look at the stats to, to directly contradict what I'm saying, um, you know, a nine point eight percent of uh, cross crosses stopped per ninety. Um, I guess that's good. You know, six foot five. I, I would expect that. Um, you know, a decent amount of goal kicks. Apparently, I mean, FB ref have really got their game with how they. Uh, I mean, I guess there's only so many metrics you can judge a goalkeeper by. Um, you've got sixty eight point two percent save rate compared to Emmy's 73 dead on uh yeah I mean it is night and day Emmy is one of the best goalkeepers the world has ever seen ever will see we love Emmy on the Villa Filler um but yeah I mean again can't really complain at this one Dan it's bodies in we've just got to trust the process um I think this is a, a much more sort of mellow and calmer filler than we've had recently over the over the past month mate it's been non-stop hasn't it and there have been a few comments you know temper your expectations Coutinho you know may not hit the ground running this this has brought us down a bit hasn't it Dan yeah this is this is one where um you it's very rare that you get a, a backup goalie that's a, a sexy signing you don't it doesn't really happen um this is, but you know in in fairness yeah in this position it's probably as sexy as you're going to get you know, you're not really going to get a man with this kind of European pedigree having played for all these clubs come and play your number two spot. So, um, yeah, I, I think w- with that in mind, um, welcome to Aston Villa, Robin Olsen. Uh, I mean, I'm not actually too sure when the first time we'll get to see you um, in between the sticks is, um, but I very much look forward to it. Yeah, for sure. And if you haven't checked out Moneyball, guys, it's not that we need to plug Moneyball. Check it out. It's a brilliant film, Brad Pitt. Uh, really good film. <laughs> 
I'm going to watch it yeah, tonight. Indeed. Great film. Great Jonah Hill. Netflix. Netflix. Yeah, very good watch. Once yeah. was Netflix. We're giving you a plug. You need it. Yes, um, <laughs> but yeah, guys, uh, if you are excited by this signing, let us know in the comments below. Also, make sure you check out One Football. It is the place to get all of your footballing information. And before we go, Dan, this is the first time we spoke since we've hit 5K. Oh, wow. Yes, of course. Con so, congratulations to you, mate. I'd raise, I've got some water here. That's about the most I can raise as a glass, mate. Cheers go. to you. <laughs> you too, brother. You too. But yeah, we've got the two shirts to give away. We'll sort that out over the next week or so. Uh, the draw will probably be on Twitter. So if you don't already follow Heart of the Holt on Twitter, make sure you do that. Follow Dan at Dan Wiseman and follow me at Dan Morgan 34 uh, I'll put links in the description in case you guys aren't following us. Uh, and yeah, I mean, guys, it's, it's been a mad one. We'll be back. Plenty more filler fillers to come over the course of January. Like, comment, subscribe. Another filler.